Cardiovascular disease claims more lives in the U.S. each year than all forms of cancer and chronic lower respiratory disease combined. And ladies, it's not just men. The good news is we can pretty much predict an attack before it happens, medically intervene, and make simple lifestyle changes to improve heart health. Dr. Dorothy Pei is a cardiologist with Modern Heart and Vascular Institute. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, you are board certified cardiovascular disease, internal medicine, advanced echocardiology, I can't even pronounce that word, nuclear cardiology, <laughs> uh, preventive medicine and with a focus on women. I think what I just said is you are highly qualified in, in this field. What made you go into cardiology? Well, um, during my medical training, you know, I took care of a lot of sick patients who happen to have cardiac disease. And I found that with just a few medications or a possible procedure, they made a full recovery. And yeah. that was really inspiring to me. I wanted to make that kind of difference in people's lives. So it all starts with knowing. And unfortunately, oh, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of people don't think to get screened to make this part of their physical, mm -hmm. especially if they have some risk factors or a certain age, because the first sign of a heart attack for a lot of people is just oftentimes what? Just the heart attack. The it actual heart happens, attack, yeah. yeah. And, they, and they're shocked when someone says, you have advanced mm -hmm. heart disease. We can predict pretty much what's mm -hmm. coming down the pike if we just do the right thing, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, as far as uh, risk factors, you know, uh, I like to split up into modifiable and non-modifiable. Mm -hmm. So for your non-modifiable, mo mo non it's usually older age, um, as well as a family history of early cardiac disease. And then for your modifiable risk factors, it's more like um, cardi or diseases that put you at risk for cardiac disease. So high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, diabetes, um, as well as your lifestyle, if yeah. you lead a healthy lifestyle or not, yeah. uh, smoking too. So a lot of people will look at those risk factors and then they'll even try to do the right things and they'll sit and wait. I didn't sit and wait. I actually went to Modern Heart and I said, okay, I just want to know, oh, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. getting that screening, he looked at it and goes, okay, you're fine. And it's nice to know you're fine or it's nice to know here's something, but we can address that. Oh yeah, I have plenty of patients who come and actually a good deal of my patients don't have cardiac disease, but they want to know like, hey, my grandfather had heart disease or my father had heart disease and he was only 50. I want to know if my heart's okay. Yeah, all right, clarify that myth. Uh, heart disease, a lot of women will drag their husbands in <laughs> or, or, you know, or their, or their yeah. loved ones or dads or whatever. They'll, dra they'll drag them in, but they don't go in themselves. Clarify that myth that heart disease is, is mainly a men's disease. Oh, completely false. So it is just as much of a women's disease as a men's disease. So uh, around 50% of women uh, do have cardiac disease in the U.S. Yeah, and what's crazy, 60 million women in the U.S., yeah, right, about 45% mm -hmm. of them, uh, already have cardiac disease and most I would imagine don't even know it. Oh yeah, d definitely for sure. And as far as women goes, you know, as opposed to men, they do have more atypical symptoms. So instead yeah, we of- present a little bit differently. Oh yes, don't we? definitely. Yeah. So instead of that classic chest pain that sometimes you get, um, women may get other symptoms like shortness of breath, unusual fatigue, weakness, nausea, dizziness, and even chest pain in the lower area, like yeah. the lower chest pain. And everything you just said, we can blame on something else. We yes. can always, yeah, we can blame it on, mm -hmm. it's what I just ate, right? Yeah. So that's why a lot of times it's dismissed. Or underdiagnosed, for sure. Mm. And that's why I think it's so important to bring attention to this area of, of yeah. cardiology. All right, heart failure, like you said, shortness of breath, swelling in the legs mm -hmm. is another thing. Um, with arrhythmias, uh, palpitations, pay attention to that. Yeah, so anytime your heart is, you feel like it's racing or it skips a beat and you're not anxious, and you're just sitting down, that's a warning sign. Okay, valve disease, uh, shortness of breath again, mm -hmm. fatigue, uh, even passing out? Yes, passing out. If your valve is very tight, a lot of times you just pass out and that's your yeah. first warning sign, it's just that. By the time you're having those types of symptoms though, does it oftentimes mean that heart disease is advanced? Usually, yes. And so you should definitely, I mean, at that point you're admitted to the hospital, a cardiologist sees you, and you, sometimes we just replace your valve right there and then. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and modern medicine can do so many cool things today. My mom at 93 had the TAVR procedure. Oh, yeah. And okay. so, you know, a lot of people think, mm -hmm. it, well, as long as the rest of your health is pretty much together, uh, there are so many things we can do, and they didn't even crack the chest. They were able to, you know, go, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. So, um, or go on and, and do that. Okay, um, preventing cardiac disease, we can't say 100% presenting in many cases, how, or preventing in many mm -hmm. cases, but there are things that we can do. So often we think the answer is a pill or surgery, but there's a lot of power oh, in our yes, own hands. Definitely, I mean, first thing is regular checkups with your primary care doctor. So they check for things that put you at risk for cardiac disease, like high blood pressure, they check your cholesterol, they screen for any early family history of heart disease. Um, another thing is leading a healthy lifestyle. So um, eating a good diet, exercising regularly, 
um, and reducing your stress level is also yeah. really important. Modern Heart and Vascular Institute, what's nice about this is that you have, um, you know, so many doctors dealing with specific parts of cardiovascular, so you can refer to, work with, it can be a team mm -hmm. approach. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we have interventionalists who uh, replace valves as well as put stents in. We have an electrophysiologist who puts pacemakers in. Uh, or does something called an ablation if you have an arrhythmia. So, and then we also even have a pediatric cardiologist as well. Yeah, and with modern heart and vascular, you mm -hmm. deal with vascular issues we do. too. We do with legs too. So our interventionists all uh, as well open up blockages in the, in the legs yeah. as well. Dr. Pei, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so you said that your parents were born in Taipei, Taiwan? Yes. Okay, and I grew up in Taipei, Taiwan. They're <laughs> I know, I still think that's Your crazy. parents and I used to play together on the playground, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. All right, to book an appointment with a board-certified cardiologist at Modern Heart and Vascular Institute, visit them online at modernheartandvascular.com or give them a call at 832-644-8930. Again, that's 832-644-8930. They accept most major insurance, including Medicare. Appointments fill up fast, so contact them today. Modern Heart and Vascular Institute has locations throughout the greater Houston area. They also have doctors who are fluent in Spanish.